morning, Pastor Sam, Auntie Rani. It's good, really good to see you. Uh, yeah, I just thought maybe Auntie Rani, you, you want to say something to the congregation before we get into the interview? I guess. Yeah, I just want to say hi to everyone alike, but especially to the ladies, which is their special day this week. Happy Mother's Day. And you can still celebrate it and be happy wherever you are. So, yeah. Yeah, I just want to say to all of you that, uh, you know, all we can say is this whole thing is about love. And lots and lots of love to you guys. And thank you for hanging in there and being united as a family of God. And uh, are we, I'm so proud of you that whatever is in front of you, you are able to... Uh, you are able to keep it till the Lord does what he is doing. And you can see the Lord is doing a lot. And uh, be thankful. You, you, you can still be uh, grateful to him every day that you have life. And we miss you lots and we love you. And uh, we can always uh, meet. And um, yeah, I so, I so love you so much. And, you know, and whatever you're going through right now, you must know that God is always in control and is always on the throne and he won't give you so much that you, that you cannot bear. So yeah, I just thank you for hanging around with the Tim and Shabay and the family. What good people you have and, and you, are, you are such a lovely bunch of people and we should see you soon and keep praying. Don't give up on praying. And yeah, we uh, miss you guys and you know, we let the Lord do what he wants to do because all things work for good to them that love the Lord. So you love the Lord and everything is working for the better. And thank you, Tim, for what you are doing and feeding the flock and whatever you're doing, bless you and your family. Thank you, Auntie Rani. Well, I, I know this, um, I'll say this, and this will obviously come from all of us here, that we love you guys and we definitely miss you guys. Um, we were supposed to see Pastor Sam, I think, last month, um, obviously with all yes. this... Lockdown. And now, yeah. and today, yeah, we'll well, we're seeing you now, <laughs> but um, but we we really we we do miss you, and we we definitely, um, I think like you say, friendships go beyond you know just um being in the same city, being yeah. in the same place, but um, I'm sure we will one day get to see you both in person again, not just on cyber, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but our hearts are always knit together, so. Uh, yeah. Not a threat and come out. So yeah, bless you guys. Thank you, Auntie Rani. Thank you. Bless you, man. This is Christian. Take care of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pastor Sam. So um, and then when well, I gotta greet the people south. As yes. Well. You know, I got right. <laughs> and so I say, as I usually say, he says, "How are you guys doing?" Um. And then you will say. We're fine, and I would say, and then you will say, "How are you doing?" And I'm saying, "Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. You are so kind." <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I, I remember, thought, remember that. Remember that. We do. I don't think we'll ever forget that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought we we should really like just hear from you how you guys are doing in in Durban. I know, um, you know. So, the move happened in February and so yeah. uh, you know with all the lockdown and everything but um how, how you and Auntie Rani been coping and yeah no it's been when I first came here we had to the livable we moved all the boxes into the different places and so on some boxes are still lying outside with things in it and we haven't finished but and uh, yeah we tried to fix some lights and whatever else that needed to be done around the house and then the lockdown happened before i can finish some of the outside the garden um so i have become you know half a maid and a half a domestic half a gardener and and whatever else and so <laughs> i and rani has become the cook really you see this cook she baked bread the other day oh, wow. and so so we just spent our time studying and I'm trying to finish that degree it started a few years ago. And then is yeah, praying, but I'm also watching Bollywood. 
you know? <laughs> Every now and then you have a Netflix movie or something <laughs> and time goes and we stuck here, go buy food. Yeah. So, but otherwise we are uh, keeping well. Yeah, I, I see you've also um, changed the look a little bit there. I, I, I don't see the yeah, goatee. Uh, Goatee's gone. <laughs> I, can, I can hear you and the people, you know, worried about that. <laughs> and uh, well, this is my new look. I had to, you know, organize myself for this. <laughs> right, no, no. I've had this now for a few weeks. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to take my, my all my hair out, you know, <laughs> shave my head. That's what I wanted to do. I yeah. think I'd leave more Cape Tonian than anything. I'll take my hair. Oh out. my word! But <laughs> then, then you have yeah, to take the front teeth as well. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I, I was thinking of this for 40 years. I wanted to do this, so you never know. One of the days, oh, oops, and I'm thinking that, yeah, but yeah. uh, no, I, I, I like to see what I look like, too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, well, it looks good on but, you. Uh, I mean, I see a little bit of the mustache still there, but everything else is gone, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, it's, it's actually Rani's thing to have me have beards and so on, it's her thing. Uh, you know, apparently it turns around. So I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so is the opposite, you know, that's, and she prayed for me not to have any facial ears. <laughs> uh, to each is on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's the same? You know, I was thinking, um, obviously, you know, as, as we were pre preparing for this interview, I was just reminded of so many of your teachings that you've done with us as Father Sars about the kingdom of God, you know, and, um, and, and you've, you've really helped us, I believe, you know, preparing us, I guess, for a time like this, where, you know, the questions that a lot of people are, are struggling with now, where is God in this? You know, if God is good, why are all, the, all these things happening? And I, I was mm. just recalling, you know, the, the kingdom theology, the kingdom now, but the kingdom still, you know, in its fullness to come. And I, I thought maybe it'd be good to hear from you. Um, how, do, how do you think believers, Christians, should approach this time right now from the kingdom perspective? You know? Yeah, you know, um, after you spoke to me the other day to yeah. uh, come share, I immediately had this word in my mind that come to me. The word was prepare, prepare for and then, you know, as, as you know, how sometimes you have a thought and, the, and you see the whole Bible come out, you know, in one rapid, rapid fire fashion, you, you see a whole lot of things. You just see the entire thing. So, I, and, uh, so, uh, so I've been thinking about it and then um, put some thoughts on paper and just to share with all of us. And a question, I think a burning question on most people's hearts is, is God still running the world? Mm. Is he still running the world? It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like somebody good is in charge at the moment when you look at the events that are happening. Uh, you know, most people, if you ask them, they, they want to know, okay, but, but, but so where is God in this? You know, we're losing thousands of people. And if this virus hit, uh, in March for us, we're in March. The whole world has not been ready, and they were caught napping. Uh, no one was ready. Not even not even the church was was ready. So the nations and the governments of the world did not see this coming, and we were we were ill prepared. Nations and governments, sports bodies, major corporate uh, corporates. We had uh, and churches, of course, and other religious bodies, organizations. Everything is being shaken at the moment. Everything, everything that is the life as we know it is being shaken. And I, I think the shaking will go on for a little while. And so, so when you ask me to share, I was thinking of. Uh, the word prepare, and then I thought about John the Baptist. You know, um, John the Baptist, he described himself as a voice of one calling in the wilderness. 
And the words were, prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. And this is what I want to quickly unpack this today. Um, you find in Luke 3, uh, verse number 1, the words talking about John, the context of John's life and ministry, it begins like this. It's, and you, and while we read this, you can think about your, your own life, you know, uh, the church's life, how, how, how it is and what God's doing. And so in the, in, the, in the 15th year, now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Eturia, and the region of Trachonitis, and Lysenius, tetrarch of Abilinim. You know, all wonderful names to give to our children. <laughs> so while, while this was going on, and the, and the Spirit of the Lord is giving context yeah. to what he's doing, I see if, if you're not prepared and if, you, if your mind is not tied in with the Lord, we will miss some very salient points, things that God wants to pass on. He, oh, he never bypasses his people when yeah. he wants to do something. He never does it. You remember Abraham and, and Sodom and Gomorrah, that thing. Can I hide from Abraham the thing I want to do? He will always want to share, always. That's his thing. And so, so in this context, he has the world, the governments of the world, the then known world, set up. And then it says, verse 2, and while, and while Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. So you have the context that the world and its government is being set up. You're talking about the kingdom, right? In the kingdom, the, the governments of the world represent the world and that system. And so you have the church, which is supposed to be representing the rule of God. So there they are organized. And then the word of the Lord, of course, he has another part of it, bypassed the world and the organized church and went to an individual who was listening, was paying attention. And, and, and so this man, having paid attention, did something about it. He went into all the regions around the Jordan, that's the river, preaching a baptism of repentance. See, I, I think that is what needs to happen now. That is what I think the church, the church, the organized church, the church as we know it, you know, um, there's a lot that's been going on in the church, generally speaking, that is not godly, that is not spirit. And so they got our attention. If somebody's paying attention, then they will prepare themselves. Here's the word of the Lord coming. And that this is one scenario back then. And that says, yes, another one. So he went out preaching a baptism of repentance. As it is, remember, he didn't go to the world to preach. Eh? Mm. He didn't go into the world. He preached to the church, the house of Israel. Yeah. And so as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, he says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Verse 5, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth. And all flesh, yeah, here's the thing, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Sure. Now, see, salvation and deliverance that is to come is our only hope. It's our only hope. And the hope is in the Lord who is coming. Now, we're not talking about the second coming. Uh, that's an event that will definitely take place. But we are talking about the many comings of the Lord mm. in history as he has back in the biblical times and also now uh, in our history and, of course, previous eras. Yeah. The Lord has been coming to awaken the church in revival and so on. So in this context that I read from Luke, uh, you know, we see three things. The world, we see the church, and we, then we see John. The word is not given, as I said, to the world, neither to the organized religion. 
but to someone obscure in the, in the wilderness, somebody who had been paying attention, was hearing and preparing himself for this event. And that, that which was about to unfold in the world at that time. And yeah. you know who was coming? The Lord himself was coming. And, uh, and, and, the, and the Lord needed someone to announce it, thereby preparing the way. And those people, the people in those days, they prepared the highways, yeah. which the dignitaries had to take, by filling the hole with stones and sand and just smoothing it for the king's chariots and horses to, to drive by speedily. I, I, I've seen this when I went to Mozambique. I, I was there uh, a few times when in the remote villages, particularly, the villages will come out uh, days before and they would prepare the way for their guests to come through uh, because they had to cut down the bushes, widen the road a bit, whatever pathway they had, widen it so the vehicles that we had would come through. Other trees, the branches would be cleared and it's a sight to see. For kilometers at length, they would come in uh, and, and clean up. And so John was a voice calling Israel, the house of Israel, first of all, to repent, to prepare for this big event, the coming of the Lord. And, and, his, and, he, and his message was very simple. Very simple message. The message was, the kingdom of God is near, he said. Repent and believe the gospel. And you recall that later on, when Jesus also, uh, in, when he, in his ministry, he asked the people to seek first the kingdom. That's all he preached to. Uh, what is the kingdom? Is it the church? That's the question. Uh, uh, the kingdom is not the same as the church. Most people think so, or some people think so. And, they, and most people thought that when uh, the, seeking the kingdom, if you ask them, are you seeking the kingdom? They'll say, yeah, I'm going to church a lot. You know, I'm really, I'm, you know, I'm going to church and I give and I do this and that and the other. And so, so now we are not meeting as a church. Huh? Does it mean that we are not seeking the kingdom? The, the kingdom of God, Jesus said, is not there here, but it's within you. You can't say the church is within you. No. We're talking uh, about the rule of God. It will certainly include the church, of course. But this shaking is asking us to rethink that idea of what it means really to seek first the kingdom. The kingdom is the government of God. So that's why the spirit of the Lord in Luke has put those three things together. The government of the world with Caesar and so on, and then the church. And then you have the guy the God will bring the kingdom to, into a whole new movement, if you like. Mm. Um, so the kingdom is abstract thing. It's the rule of God. It's the reign of God. The question is, is Jesus really Lord over our lives? Does he rule? If he rules, then we will trust him even in this circumstance. So question, I know you're probably going to ask me, so how, how do we prepare then? Huh? <laughs> is that what you're asking? I'm going to try and I hope you. <laughs> that is the question. That understand. is the question. <laughs> is the question. Yeah. How should we? How should we prepare? Because I like to always say. So what do you do? What happens? So what? What's the point? In Psalms 24, uh, anyway, this is how it starts. Verse one. It's a Psalm of David. And it starts like this: The earth is the Lord's. Think of that one. Yeah, first, is he in charge? Hey, it's his earth. Is he running the world? It's it. If you think, well, the earth and the world different, watch. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein, all of them. He is running it. It's his thing. And so you, you think he'll abandon it? No. He promised to keep us. But there's some things going on in this world that he's allowing for a reason. And it is shaking us. So he founded this earth and everything upon the seas. 
right, to that on water and established it upon the waters. And then he asked the question, the psalmist. So there's this Lord, God. Who, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Because he's trying to find somebody with a prepared heart, with a prepared place for habitation. His habitation, his word, his kingdom word. We need that. You know, in, in Jesus' one of his parables, he's talking about the sow and the seed. You recall the, the, a quarter of the seed fell on hard soil, on the path, hard soil, not prepared soil. So the birds of the air, talking about Satan, took the word away from the heart. So we have a job to maintain our garden. Yes. You have to ensure that we're, we're cleaning up, that, you know, that we're getting prepared, ready, cutting down trees and bushes and whatnot that need to be. So this is who may ascend, who may stand, and it says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol. An idol can be anything today, anything, and every idol is, is, is falling that we have. Sport, big thing, sport. I don't know, I dare say rugby is, is an idol, but I, you know, I know how big rugby is in the world. <laughs> but certainly, everything is being shaken. Yeah. So, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, and then it says, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his own. And then I looked up that word, he shall receive blessing, the blessing, blessing is prosperity. The same, the same uh, deliverance or salvation, you will see it if you fix things up, you know. Because that's what Jesus even said, you seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be given to you. That's, that's a, as a very easy way to look. And so he says, and then verse 27, uh, verse 7 says, Lift up your heads, O you gaze, uh, be lifted up your everlasting doors. And the king of glory may come in. We want the king. We want to prepare the way. We want to prepare our hearts so that he would come. We want to prepare our hearts so that he can come through us to touch the world. He's looking for somebody. So who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads or your gates. Lift up your blessing doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And then he adds one word, Selah. Think about it. Think about that. Keep that in mind. So it's the Lord's earth and everybody in it belongs to the Lord. He says, prepare your hearts. We shall, and we will not be overtaken again. That's what it's trying to say. Be awake. Remember one place, and I think it is in Thessalonians, it says that the day will come as a thief in the night. Eh? The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. But it says we, have not, we are not of the night, that the, that day will overtake us. We are of the day. So it's not like we will be, you know, caught napping. Obviously, if our, our, our eyes are open and awakened, our hearts are awakened, then it's going to be a good day. Now, I think the other thing, the last thing I want to say is that um, I, I see also parallels in the spirit world and in the natural world. Some things that are playing out in the natural world has already been playing out in the spirit, you know? Yeah. The parallels. So when you see these things, obviously, if you were awake, if we're awake, then we will begin to say, ah, yeah, I see it. And so the world is calling us to wash our hands, right? Mm. A few times we read it now in Psalms 24, we read it, calling us to wash our hands and it's talking about socially distancing ourselves. This, I believe, is what is being called for by the Spirit. In James, it says, Submit, therefore, yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And he says, 
draw near to God. Don't distance yourself from God. Yeah. This is how we've been living before. Distancing ourselves from God, his church, his people, his kingdom, his rule. We got our own gods. We're living our own way, walking our own way. Everything is shaking now. And we want to know, hey, are we part of this whole thing? And God is calling us back. He says, hey, draw near to me. And then he will draw near to you. Scripture says. And then he says, cleanse your hands. You cleanse your hands, you sinners. I don't know who he's talking to. I imagine he, this is James. He's probably talking to the church first off. And then, and then this, in the church, we have much happening. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. And we, as I said, we have distanced ourselves from, uh, from God and, and drawn near to friends and family. We have positioned ourselves in such a way that says, that is our little God you know, going on at the side. Now we can't meet with the so-called gods. We can't do the things that the gods of this world you know, are wanting for our worship and our time. But God is calling us. He's calling us to pray. So, and, 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 and this is the last point I want to make. You know, and seeking the Lord, seeking the Lord is what I believe God wants. He's, he's wanting us back. He wants us back. Come closer, he says. Come near to me. I'm okay. It's fine. Come. And he wants his church back, I believe. And that is a word to the to the church and particularly leaders, I want my church back. I don't want this thing that is your party. I want my church back and I want to be there. I want to be present there. And so seek me while I may be found. Pray, and we are told many times in scripture, be vigilant, be alert, be watchful, wait, awake, you know. God wants to speak, he's coming. Are you ready? The, the, so this past week, I found that interesting article, that, that survey done by someone from Denmark. Apparently, she found out that the most searched word or phrase was prayer. And I quickly read that. This is one, one a few words. This is, this is a Google search. Yeah. Google searches for prayer have surged worldwide in step with the surge of emerging cases of COVID-19 that they are related. According to a European researcher, the rising interest in seeking information about prayer on Google skyrocketed during the month of March, 2020, when COVID-19 went global, wrote Jeanette, that's her name, Sinding Benzin, Benzin, an associate professor in the Department of Education or Economics at the University of Copenhagen, Denmark. And she is also an executive director of the Association for the Study of Religion, Economics and Culture. And she did what she did was using Google Trends data on internet searches for prayer for 75 countries. Wow. She said she found that search intensity for prayer doubles every 80,000 new registered cases of COVID-19. Every time they get 80,000 new cases of COVID-19, the, the, the search for prayer doubles. So the, the God's drawing his people at this time. Is it not interesting too that, that of all the questions that the disciples could have asked Jesus, they asked him one question. Teach us to pray. Isn't that amazing? Teach us to pray. They didn't ask him to show how he performed his miracles, but just that. And then he said, pray like this. And then you know about the whole Lord's Prayer. In, in this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. There it is again. Your kingdom come. We pray yeah. for it. Your will be done on earth. It's your world as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Again, the nuts and bolts of our life. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. He knows what's going on in our hearts. Cleaning our hands, cleaning our hearts, 
All of those things are very important. He gave it. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Mm. And uh, and I would say amen to you. Oh. You've been a nice person. That's, Pastor Sam, we are, uh, honestly, I, I know I'm going to say this on behalf of all of us, but it's so good to hear from you. And just that revelation, you know, of um, pre preparation. We, we need, we in a season of preparation. Um, we've yes, been focusing we as a church on just um, coming together, you know, in, in terms of family, in terms of individually, just coming before God, um, reading the, 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 the scriptures, getting into the word and, and spending time in prayer. And so I, I just think, you know, you, you've just helped us to, to put it into perspective because God is definitely moving and there's a shaking that's happening. Um, I think it would be appropriate if you could pray for us, you know, it's just, I know you always pray for us, but, yeah. <laughs> but maybe to say a prayer I, blessing over us. Delight. Yeah. It's my delight. Lord, again, thank you for what you are doing. <laughs> we are so relaxed because you are in charge you are definitely in charge of your world it's your world it's your making it's your creation and and you're not going to mess up and you you're not going to mess us up you want the best for us thank you for sending your son thank you for life now thank you for individuals like john the baptist and others that can show us the way Teach us today as a church how to prepare your way. Firstly, in our own lives, I pray for every member of our church there in Cape Town. I pray first off, Lord, for our leaders, Tim and Cheve, and the others that are there, the elders, the leaders, and workers, the staff, would you be with each one of them, Lord? May they not be shaken to a point of to to a point of despair. But Lord, bring them, bring us all to a place of desperation, a desperation for you to love you. Oh Lord, what access you gave us! What access we have to go before the King! and to cry out on behalf of others. Would you help us, Lord, wash our hands, cleanse our hearts, wash, Lord, our, our mouths. Keep us protected, I pray. Not just from this virus, coronavirus, but Lord, the virus of sin. Lord, even as that mask is put over our mouths and our, and our noses, help us, Lord, to, to be muzzled when it comes to gossip and whatever else. That we try to ruin one another. Forgive, I pray. Yours is the kingdom. And I pray, Father, for those seeking hearts and those waiting hearts. Those that are being awakened, awakened to your word and to your mind, I ask that you help us speak it. We pray for your kingdom. We pray also for the church generally. Whatever the church is today, such despair in the church, in leaders, such struggles. I ask, Lord, that even as the shaking goes on and on and on, that you'll protect your people. I thank you for preserving our world and blessing, adding, ministering. I ask for your favor and your blessing. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Sam. Thank you You're for your welcome. time. And, yeah. And again, we just we love you guys. And uh, we pray a blessing over you and your yeah. family, and Gavin and Greg and they, you know, mm -hmm. Lord, yes, bless you, you and keep you safe. Yeah.